very uh, impressive to see. This, um, it, to me, I don't know, this, this tournament has been a big, really big nostalgia trip. As um, Actually, I believe Fabian's one place I've still got. I think Robin's playing Dark Cry. Oh, okay. You know, so it's actually the other, way, the other way around. But yeah, seeing some of the lists in this tournament has been like a really big nostalgia trip for me. Seeing like Tall Drop Trubbish and seeing like, the Scythe Garbodor, these are all like deck archetypes that I remember you know, seeing play in Standard from so long ago. Mm-hmm. And seeing them still make their presence here and expand it now is uh, really, really uh, fun to watch. As we see, oh, free Ultra Ball prize from uh, Robin's oh, side there. And the Hooper EX. That is really, really not great for him. <laughs> so that's about as... It's basically almost like zero chance of him getting an optimal start with all of that that's gone. That's going to be pretty awkward for him. We'll see how he's able to navigate his opening turns as uh, we are going to see the uh, opening hands from Fabian. Looks like he's finally found himself a basic Pokemon. Looks like there's going to be a mulligan for Robin as we are going to see some prize cards come down and uh, the uh, Turtonator tech as well that he's playing, which is a pretty interesting one there. Yeah, it's, uh, it serves purposes in a few different matchups. You can use it to sort of wall a little bit against the uh, Galissapod Gar- Garbodor potentially and against a few other things just because of the you know shell trap hits a weakness. You can just do some shenanigans there and uh, it's like another good wall card. Like Seismitoad is good because it's something that your opponent just has to like deal with very slowly because you slow them down. Turtonator slows your opponent down in a different way because if they if you attack it, then you sort of get hurt back. But we are off, ladies and gentlemen, and it looks like Fabien Puyol of France will be going for First, starting with benching a Trubbish and just playing an N. Yeah, not fantastic. He's started with Tapu Lele, which is not his ideal, so he's going to be looking to find uh, one of his float stones to try and move that out. He does have a couple of turns to get the Quaking Punch. Obviously, going first means he can maybe attach manually some energy to the Tapu Lele to retreat it, so really all he needs to do this turn is try and develop that Seismitoad as quickly as possible and maybe get one energy attachment in there this turn. Yeah. Something else we should mention, of course, about uh, Fabian Puyol is that although he may not have quite the same level of uh, prolific accomplishments as uh, Robin might have, for example, he's still no slouch himself. You've seen him like a couple of times on stream. He has had previous successes, uh, so he's definitely gonna gonna try and give Robin as hard of a time as he can. And uh, if any deck is gonna give an opponent a hard time, it's gonna be something Seismitoad based. Yeah, that's definitely true. So both players on four zero one records. A win here would mean that they're pretty much guaranteed to make it into uh, the top eight tomorrow. So there is a lot to play for right now. Uh, Robin kicks off with an energy attachment, and he then just goes for a Professor Juniper, and is now going to continue his turn with the Battle Compressor here, and as is often the case, he is going to start getting rid of some Darkrai GX as quickly as possible, as well as potentially some more Darkness Energy, depending on how many are already in there. Yeah, a little bit of an unfortunate Sycamore, uh, Juniper even, was it Juniper or Sycamore? I reckon. It's the same card. <laughs> it, 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 it is the same card, that's very true. But um, a bit of an unfortunate uh, discard for Robin is he was forced to both discard a Dark Patch and a Max Elixir. Mm. Of course, he does, will have access to the more of each over the course of the game, but he's really, uh, you want to get the most use out of these sorts of cards. Like The more you discard, it's the, the less recovery and damage output you'll be able to put out against uh, a deck uh, like uh, Fabian's and especially because uh, towards later stages in the game because Fabian will be item locking Robin he won't be able to play those items anyway mm-hmm. so the more he can play turn one the better and so wasting a few early on this uh, might end up uh, being a little bit of a sad face moment for Robin yeah it's a little bit awkward for him but I think that's why he went for the Professor Juniper just so that he could try and then draw into as many items as possible cash in on them before he gets locked out of them for the remainder of the game but looks like he's not got much else going for him he's going to bench a pseudo wudo it looks like and um, he has a couple more items to play he'll most likely play the versus seeker this turn uh, preemptively just in case seismato does use quaking punch the following one so we're going to see him go ahead grab the chorus preemptively and it looks like he's just going to use uh, the free retreat thanks to the ability dark cloak and go into the dark ride gx and pass it over yeah it's so preemptively using versus seeker to get back a supporter from your discard pile against item lord deck is something very very important to do not everyone always like, remembers to do it and sometimes you lo- you know you get caught out and you just forget yeah and it ends up just losing you the game entirely. Yeah. So Robin, of course, being the high-level player as he is, he's not going to fall for victim to that. He has remembered to do it. Now back onto Fabian's side. We see he's got the double colors to put on the Toad. That's uh, really good for him. But he's, uh, his supporter was Chorus. Now, right now, Chorus is the same as a Shauna. He's yeah. only going to be able to stuff it in draw five. And Joe, I'm sure you have uh, lots to say about Shauna specifically. Oh, I do but indeed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Chorus is normally going to be drawing you more cards than five. But it's one of those things that just gets better as the game progresses. So you run the risk of having Chorus in your deck because it's not fantastic in the early turns that's why typically you only see one copy because it's something that you can reuse over and over again uh, with versus seeker without having many of them as liabilities in the early turns so 
We're going to see a big Ultra Ball here. He's going to grab himself a Shaman EX to draw six more cards. He's definitely going to be looking to um, move that Tapu Lele this turn. That is the big thing he wants to get going. Maybe if he can combo that with something like a Hypnotoxic Laser, he could have a very powerful turn here. Yeah, he could. The one thing he really needs is a Float Stone. It looks like he missed it. He did hit the uh, laser, though, so mm -hmm. he might be able to, as long as he gets a Heads here, and then maybe Robin gets a Tails, although Fabian just hits a Tails anyway, <laughs> so just the poison this time. Yeah, it looks like he's going to have to end his turn there. Maybe, uh, does he have the option for a Garbodor? Uh, if there's no tool... Oh, he's already evolved into a different Garbodor. Yeah, My apologies. Has. So yeah, he just has to pass it over to Robin. There is the poison damage being uh, three damage counters in between turns, thanks to the Verbank City Gym Stadium. One of the biggest combos that we have seen in Expanded for a long time is this Hypnotoxic Laser being combined with Verbank City Gym to rack up damage counters. Even when you look at something like Seismitoad X, it's known for being an annoyance because of... Um, the Quaking Punch, but when you combine it with these lasers and the stadium, you're dealing a, a large amount of damage in between turns. Yeah. What it really does is it enables the Toad, because a 30 damage a turn, more often than not, especially in Expanded, is not really enough to win in the game on its own. You need these extra little like ramps to actually put things in range to just you know, keep Quaking Punching and make this pressure worthwhile, and laser, absolutely, as you said, Joe, is one of the ways you can really do that, along with the Verbank City Gym. Now, Robin did have the Counter Stadium this time. He was able to play the Skyfield, so now going back to Fabian's turn, uh, Robin's Dark Ray will only be taking one poison damage instead of three, but still, getting that three counters on can, uh, is going to help uh, Fabian build his way to an eventual knockout. Yeah, and speaking of building, uh, because there was no item lock on Robin's side, he's going to try and benefit from this chorus uh, for a big eight cards. Hopefully he can start finding some of these uh, dark patches and max elixirs, but it looks like he's not found many of them. I think it's just one max elixir at the right uh, other side of his uh, board, uh, sorry, his hand. Yeah. Uh, one of the big things he did find was actually a Dark Pulse Dark Cry. That's one big thing missing from his board right now, and as we know, he's prized three Ultra Balls, so it's quite fortunate that he's been able to find one finally. Yeah, definitely. Because that's the thing he's going to look for, for making one-hit KOs. I think the big unfortunate thing for Robin is that as we mentioned at the start of the game he's priced for your Ultra Balls. Normally mm. maybe you could uh, do a chorus so you dig big for an Ultra Ball and then maybe discard a couple of things, grab a Shaman to dig even further to, as you said, make use of the fact that he was able to dodge item lock for a second turn in a row. But because he has free Ultra Ball prize, then all of a sudden seeing your Shaman and making use of that dig is a lot less likely and as we saw there he basically missed any dig cards. You saw a couple of Bath Compressors but those don't let you see more cards, they just let you deck thin. It's mm -hmm. not really what he wants to do right now. So we are going to see the free retreat thanks to the um, Dark Cloak ability. He's going to move into his other Dark Ride GX, which is ready to go, and it can deal 130 damage this turn with the Dark Head attack. But actually, he plays Hypnotoxic Laser here, so he could be taking the tempo and going for two prizes very quickly here with the Dead End GX attack. Yeah, because Dead End GX, uh, as we mentioned, if uh, before we see it, sorry, in round one, actually, if your opponent's active Pokemon is affected by any special condition, Dead End GX just knocks it out. No questions asked. Yeah, no questions asked. Some players do go for the Malimar uh, EX approach, others go for the Hypnotoxic Laser. Some people play a combination of both. Um, the Hypnotoxic Laser is the much more proactive way of getting uh, the, de the Dead End GX going because you only need physically three energy in the play, whereas the Malamar is an extra energy that you need to attach physically that turn. So it's reliant more on hitting uh, Dark Patches and such. So uh, this is a much faster approach that Robin's gone for here. And Fabian's going to try and prey on this by using an end straight away. Yeah, the other thing about going for the Malamar approach is that uh, it makes you more vulnerable to ability lock. As we've already seen, Garbatox and Garbador is mm. not 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 present in Expanded. <laughs> it's uh, definitely so much around as it is in Standard, so that's definitely something you have to watch out for. And not only that, but Laser can sometimes just net you that little bit extra damage. You're 10 short mm -hmm. of a KO as well. And even in this situation, although Robin himself doesn't play Verbank City Gym, he can make use of his opponent's Verbank in, this, in these sorts of matches and get more poison damage that way. So we are going to see Fabian simply ended with a Quaking Punch. Robin had a pretty quick turn himself. He attached to his Dark Pulse Dark Cry and then just simply announced Dark Cleave. Yeah, so Dark Cleave doing 130 damage and then just not affected by resistance. Not that it matters here, but uh, maybe again, if you go up against some kind of like fairy based deck, uh, no, so in Gardevoir Focus, you can actually still get a two shot with Dark Cleave. So not actually that not bad. Yeah, and this is a pretty good turn for Fabian. He's able to ace a roller, picking up his Seismitoad, that psychic energy that he attached on the very first turn of the game that you think you're never going to get value out of that. Instead, he's able to ace a roller, simply attach that to his Garbodor, 
and Robin has played so many item cards that already Trash Lanch is getting enough to knock out the remaining HP of that Darkrai. And this is the catch-22 that you find yourself in when you're playing against Life Episode Garbodor. Now that it has access to this Trash Lanch Garbodor as well, the Garbotoxin one, sure, you can play your items really quickly, make use of the fact that uh, you, know, you only have like one or two turns of items, but then you're going to get punished for that as well because then the Trash Lanch Garbodor is going to come in and hit you for a ton of damage. Yeah. So it's, it's also like you can't win no matter which way you play it. Yeah, it's one of those catch-22s, as you said. The Seismitoad makes you want to rush and play as many items before they get locked out of the game, but at the same time, uh, you get punished in the late game for the um, item usage as well. So we're going to see Robin. It looks like he hit a Max Elixir, and that's actually really important for him in order to get the knockout in response to this Trash Lanch Garbodor. And uh, he's also going to play an N himself. So he'd have to be fairly fortunate, actually, I think, right now to get another energy. And it's going to be integral. This is a really big four card N, I think. Yeah, if he can hit one more energy off of this, then he's probably going to be fine. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Not just one, but two Dark Patches for Robin means that, yeah, he will be able to take the return KO. And this is, uh, although obviously, as we just said, the Trash Lunch Garbodor is very strong because it forces, uh, you know, it forces you to, it, not, not force you, but it makes you potentially get punished no matter which way you play the game. At the same time, it does open your opponent to play items again because you're not item locking them. So then Robin can have a turn like this where, oh, I can see my Dark Patches and I can actually get everything charged up once more. And now all of a sudden I have a response, oh, whereas perhaps I wouldn't have had one this before. This is so good. This is so good for Robin. Hitting both Dark Patches means he was able to use his Dark Ride GX's ability and simply Dark Patch twice onto it to get it out of nowhere back into the active and attacking and being able to use that Dark Cleave to take a knockout in response on this Garbodor. A very, very nice end for him. A, a very nice end for him and uh, doing that means that of course, I mean Fabian, there's almost no way, in fact yeah, there's actually no way that he's able to KO this Dark Ride next turn. There is no more Trash Lunch Garbodor available to him. There's no even Trubbish he can evolve. He's bench one now but of course he can't evolve that straight away. So now Robin can yeah just take this first KO with this uh, Dark Cleave and then even with, uh, with the Slice of Soda in the active, he can just use the Dark Luck ability again retreat into the Dark Pulse Dark Ride and knock that out as long as he gets a few more energy in play. Yeah, it's a really big swing as well. Just having more energy in play means that the Dark Pulse is much more likely to deal with the Slice of Toad much quicker as well. So we We've seen how Fabian tries to deny prizes by acerolaring these fury belted seismitoads. It's a big part of this deck trying to deny prizes, and that may not be relevant anymore if uh, Robin gets to a high enough amount of damage. Yeah, absolutely, so, uh, we see a big laser here, and it gets heads. It is a, it is an absolutely massive laser quaking punch. There, going to do seventy combined with the poison damage, and it's a heads tails. Robin flips Ooh. tails on the sleep, and. This is why Laser is one of the one of the most frustrating cards to play against in the Pokemon trading card game. Yeah, and Robin looks at his hand. He has no way of moving out of the Dark Cry, so he just has to take 30 more damage and pass it back over to Fabian. And that's all it takes, really, to get back in the game when you're playing a Seismitoad X deck. And another huge turn for Fabian is he has the Garbatox and Garbodor as well. So now, even without a sleep, uh, Robin is going to be forced to discard energy if he wants to retreat, meaning that he won't be able to do as much damage with Dark Pulse. And actually, this Seismitoad all of a sudden becomes a lot harder to deal with. Man, Hypnotoxic Laser still is <laughs> just such a big factor in the expanded format. We haven't seen it much today, but uh, in the right spots it can completely change games, and we're seeing Robin have to grit his teeth here and have to pay retreat in order to preserve his Dark Cry GX, not going yeah. down for free, bringing up his Dark Cry EX that has the Dark Pulse attack, and uh, I can't see much else going on in his hand, just a bunch of items, and that's what Toad loves to play against. Yeah, and uh, the one... The one saving grace for um, for Fabian at this point is no, rather for Robin is that Fabian doesn't have a supporter to play. He has a uh, oh, he's, okay, sorry, he's got Sycamore. I mean, isn't he has got an Ace Roller? So mm -hmm. you know he's going to be forced to uh, attack with the side Sword again probably, and then uh, Dark Pulse will be able to knock it out. Uh, but it means that Robin will be, t uh, will be able to at least take uh, two more prizes. Yep, so we do see Fabian once again be content. Well, no other option really to just go for the Quaking Punch. Uh, doing the 40 damage and still locking Robin out of the game as much as he can here. Yeah, definitely. As uh, we see, he does have the... Fabian has another Trash Lanch Garbodor ready to go as well, so uh, that's only going to be one Psychic Energy away from potentially putting out a big threat. And interesting, a Karen from Robin. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I don't know. I think he actually has no Pokemon in there, so I think he's just trying to burn it from his own hand um, because he doesn't want to <laughs> draw into this card again if he is get. Uh, gets hit with an end so uh, again it's some of these small things that you see from top players where you think well this is a zero impact play why would he do it it's so that he can't draw back into that Karen later on in the game because yeah. when you're being hit with Quaking Punch especially you have a large 
uh, a much larger proportion of cards are useless to you. Yeah. And now that he's going down to one prize, um, he wants to have as many good draws as possible. Yeah. I was going to say the one downside of him using the Karen is that he could potentially give back uh, attacking options for Fabian, but at the same time, it's also potentially more useless cards that Fabian will now draw off of his own end. So mm -hmm. although he's giving him back resources, it actually may end up weirdly in a way benefiting Robin. Yeah, yeah, that also could be a big factor here as Fabian is only going to be drawing himself four cards because of the two that he's taken already. So let's see how he does here. He does have the Floatstone Garbodor active. I don't know if he was able to find himself a Psychic Energy. That's going to be a big deal here. Um, whether or not he can hit that. Oh, Ooh, he does it have it. There it's we go. Is, is that going to be enough for the KO? Yes, it is. I'm pretty certain. It was many turns earlier, so I'm guessing this is going to be a ridiculous amount of damage. And he's going to go himself down to two prize cards. And Robin has a very awkward turn here. Everything has one energy on it, but because of the ability lock, nothing has a free retreat cost. So whatever he promotes here has to be able to either take a hit or be the single prize option, which is the pseudo wudo. But how can he move that later on? Maybe he needs to. He really needs to find a Guzma pretty quickly here. Yeah. One thing that is very important to note: Robin does not play any kind of tool removal. He does not play Zerosic. He does not play mm -hmm. any kind of field blower. So this ability lock is going to stay for pretty much the rest of the rest of the game. And as you mentioned, because he isn't able to free retreat, he can't easily say dark patch, attach, retreat, and then. Uh, be able to take the win that way with Dark Cleave and instead he's just like looks like he might be just forced to do a manual attachment and maybe pass he's going to have a quick look at the discard pile first to see what uh, Fabian's actually burned through but Fabian might just be able to take this you know we need to definitely count the items in the discard pile Robin wouldn't leave the Dark Cry in the active position um, just to lose the game he no, definitely no, wouldn't do that he has a Guzma in his hand um, so maybe this is a stalling Guzma. That is most likely what it's going to be. And he's just going to have to hope that he can trap this Seismitoad X for a couple of turns as he just passes it back over here. Yeah, but it looks like there's a computer search from Fabian. He's going to be able to get something. Uh, just Versus Seeker is oh, all he yeah. needs. There, <laughs> yeah, there yeah. we go. He's going to use that Versus Seeker. He can Guzma, which gets his own Seismitoad X out of the way and bring, uh, brings up a two prize Pokemon, which is in range of his Trash Lanch and steal the game there. Yeah, Fabian winning a very, very close series. That could have easily gone to either player at any point, but the big, big turn, as we mentioned, that Hypnotoxic Laser heads tails yeah. gave Fabian the extra turn he needed to just just pinch that win away. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Robin was in such a dominant board state. He had so much energy in play. He had a really good end to four cards where he hit double dark patch and it looked like he was so far ahead. He dealt with the only Garbodor in play. But not only did that laser by um, Fabian a turn, it also meant that he could develop his Trubbishes into both Garbodors. The combination of, of Ability Lock and then a one-hit KO machine, which is what Garbatoxin, oh sorry, the uh, Trash Lanch Garbodor is. It's just such a powerful combination and we saw that laser have a huge effect in that game. Yeah, and this to me just really shows off the strength of this uh, size sort of Garbodor archetype, especially now that, as we mentioned before, it's gained access to this alt alternate attacker, where, whereas before, you know, you'd be forced to just very slowly grind out a game just doing quaking punches and maybe you like, finish off with a grenade hammer to win that little bit quicker. But now you have this alternate attacker, which is doing, it's not doing 130 and damaging your own two things. It's doing a lot of damage. It's <laughs> taking one shots and it's going to pretty much destroy anything your opponent puts yeah. out if they forced to play loads of items, which they probably will if they're playing, if they're playing against size episode in the first place yeah and on top of that it's just a single prize so <laughs> it's a threat that your opponent has to deal with but in doing so they often skew their own prize trade and slow down their own win conditions so it's just good in every department really yeah, yeah just uh, that's a really solid addition to this deck really cementing it as uh, one of the staple expanded archetypes i would say Indeed. So, so we're going to see. Robin's going to get to go first here. And really, what can he do to adapt his game plan? He had a couple of awkward turns. Obviously, his prizes were bad last game. He couldn't find Hoop. He couldn't find Ultra Ball. So he had a lot of energy in play, but it was never really on the Dark Pulse Pokemon. Is that something that he needs to do this game? Probably. And I think uh, he ha had a bit of awkward bench management oh, earlier. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt myself there, but three uh, Garbodors there, prized from uh, Fabian's side. Is that all the Garbodors he plays? Yeah. No. You know, he has what he has access to one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So he plays like a mixture of like the Garbatoxins. He plays like one from Breakpoint, one from uh, the Dragons Exalted. But he has only access to one Trash Lash. <laughs> that is going to be very awkward for him. <laughs> Robin himself, he's prized uh, two 
uh, dark patches, so that's not great for him either. It looks like Robin only had an attachment and a hypnotoxic laser. Uh, Fabian actually led with his Turtonator GX of all things, so this is looking like such a weird board state. I've never seen a Turtonator in the active with a fighting fear about a psychic energy before. <laughs> Just like a mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> They're finding new ways to play the game every single day, so here we go. After Robin had a slow turn one, he's now able to um, dump his hand and get a fresh one, gets down uh, another Dark Rite as well as a Pseudo Wudo here, so hopefully he's going to be able to develop a little bit more now. Yeah, he's able to rip the second more thankfully for him, which means that he was very quickly the first to draw out of both players, you know, not drawing anything useful at all. And he sees even the battle compressor as well, so uh, <laughs> this game might be over quite quickly if Fabian doesn't find something in the next few turns. Because, uh, right, in fact, can Robin just take the win this turn? Uh, if he gets a dead end GX, he can win. Yeah, that's I'm what not I was sure thinking. if he. I'm not sure if he has any other dark patch or max elixirs in his list because he used a battle compressor first, getting rid of a live target, which is the dark energy. I would imagine that he doesn't have a max elixir in his hand. So either he has the dark patch or he doesn't. Maybe he has Shaman X to draw a few more cards here. Um, it could be over very very quickly. Yeah, all he needs is one more energy attachment. He has already attached one from hand, so he would uh, need to yeah to dig here. Yeah, there's a Shaman. Here is we this, go. Do you see it? This is big. He has got to douse machine. machine. That is maybe. All oh, he can battle compressor away a dark patch. Yeah, there it is. It. There you go. <laughs> so Robin wins a very quick game two of a of a two card douse machine battle compressor combo. Able to discard the dark patch he needs and get it back to do dead dead end GX to knock out the Turtonator. And we are on to game three. Wow! As soon as as quickly as that. That's one of the aspects of the Dark Cry archetype that it can just get so much energy into play and access some of these very powerful attacks and one of the crucial points is that Robin is choosing to play the Hypnotoxic Laser build. If he didn't play Hypnotoxic Laser he probably wouldn't have got the win that game because Malamar is a turn slower many yeah. times because he needs to get that manual attachment yeah. so it's his own decision making which has led to this outcome. Yeah definitely he would have needed to not attach manually to the Dark Cry when he could use the ability and then hope to hit Malamar plus energy attachment plus two uh, like a max and a dark patch which is again not impossible but so much less likely because it's just much less easy it's like you said it's less proactive yeah whereas it, because he had the laser already and uh Fabian wasn't able to retreat or that cure the special condition in any way. He needed much less to get that little the energy onto the Darkrai GX to do the GX attack and win, and he was able to do it. And that win is so huge for Robin because, as you can see, the clock ticking down, he still has just over half an hour to try and complete another game. And we've seen uh, the first game was fairly long, but because both decks can ramp into such high damage output, it does become a quick exchange after a couple of turns of um, both setting up both sides of the board. So we're most likely going to have enough time to complete this game here. Yeah. Also, as you can see here, we have seen both players prizes no neither one of them this time prizing anything too bad we see like a couple of mixture of things but nothing unworkable although ace Rola being prized again for uh oh, i'm not sure about it again but ace Rola being prized for fabian's side could come could come to hurt him indeed so we do see fabian kick off he is going to attach a psychic energy once again to his seismatode he actually plays a dedene as uh one of his tech pokemon which is an interesting choice from him uh, maybe he's expecting some uveltal variants something like that and maybe uh rayquaza Mega Rayquaza as well. Uh, he is going to simply Tapu Lele, find himself a Juniper, and off the Juniper. It's as if he used a Bridget because he found lots of basic Pokemon and then passes back over to Robin. Yeah, something that's uh, interesting as a difference compared to uh, from Standard against Expanded is that although some decks play Bridget and Expanded, nowhere near as many do because mm -hmm. uh, something we also also mentioned is that the Expanded format is so much faster. You have so many like different uh, consistency options that let you both set up in the early turns but also let you dig through in the late game. So there's no, there's almost like no point dedicating that slot to Bridget because it's too slow almost mm -hmm. which is weird to say because everyone in standard is just resigned to playing that card but uh, yeah here most people are just opting against it because there's just not enough time and also of course it can only get one EX yeah. so if you're playing an EX focused deck then Bridget isn't very useful to you there's only a handful of EX uh, sorry yeah, GX focused decks uh, in expanded. A lot of other archetypes are based around EXs, so much more traditional Hooper EX, Shaman EX builds are roaming around, as you say. No one really has time to use Bridget other than like exclusively just some Garbodor variants because they basically slow your opponent down in the process. Just by being a Garbodor, they slow the game down. So uh, we are going to see Robin go for the Battle Compressor, doing the very typical thing of putting a Dark Ride GX as well as two Darkness Energies in there. Um, you've got to expect that he'll want to get that Dark Ride back on the board and uh, maybe continue his turn with some Dark Patches or maybe more Max Elixirs. The 
game of the game is always with Darkrai. Get as much energy into play here. Yeah, and equally, something else that will help him do that is this Oblivion Wing of Eltor that mm -hmm. we've seen uh, play in so many Dark Archetypes, just letting you do 30 damage and then attach a Dark Energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. Opting to hold off on the Dark Patches in his hand because, of course, he was able to attach using the Oblivion Wing of Eltor anyway. But also, equally, Robin's hand is not that great. He's got well, this no. be a Sky Field and two Dark Patches and maybe a Dark Energy. Whereas Fabian, he is motoring through his deck. He's going to use another... Um, Professor Juniper here. He's able to evolve into a Trash Lounge Garbodor. He's going to attach a second Psychic Energy, which fulfills the double colorless cost, and he is going to finish his turn with a Quaking Punch, which is exactly what he was looking for. Yeah, and now not only that, but, but uh, because Robin is not drawing useful cards, and equally now he's under item lock, now it's even less likely he's able to draw out of it because he needs to hit a physical supporter or maybe a Shaman or something to get his hand working again. Yeah, and as you can see, he can't do much. He can simply manually attach to his Dark Ray EX on the bench and announce Oblivion Wing. No darkness energy even in the discard pile, so no extra ramp of energy, which is really what he's hoping for. Whereas Fabian, he's going to put down the um, Verbank City Gym as well as another double colorless energy so setting up multiple seismatodes now and you can see why this is still such an age old powerhouse yeah, definitely but the Robin does catch a little bit of a break as he did draw a Colrus to turn so that's at least something he can play that and actually draw a decent amount he can draw six uh, and he's got the Skyfield down as well so he can stop the Verbank from being uh, well, the poison damage rather from being too much of an issue, and yeah, here comes the chorus. So hopefully, we'll be able to find something out of this and get himself back in this game. Yeah, he's going to be looking for something like the uh, dark cloak, dark cry, as one of the things, as well as just as much darkness energy as possible. Uh, his deck is full of item cards which are currently being shut off, which is kind of awkward for him. So let's see what he can do off of this uh, six card chorus. Again, not fantastic, but it does the job. Yeah, I mean, it's like Professor X's Fury, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, a few darkness energy, and I think, yeah, he got pretty much exactly what he was looking for, to be honest. Um, he may still end on a slower turn with an Oblivion Wing, um, but really he has manual attachments, and that's really all he can do while he's under item lock. Just keep trying to slowly get as many attackers going as possible. Yeah. I think the problem with uh, using Oblivion Wing is that, again, he's not able to use any items to actually discard energy from his hand. So, I mean, he's seen energy. Mm -hmm. He can do these manual attachments. That's fine. Um, but... Okay, is that is what he's up to go for? Something else he could have done is maybe retreated into the dark right now, but the one with uh, dark pulse. But the reason he didn't do that is because then he just falls prey to maybe Fabian having an Acerolo as as he there we go exactly on cue. Yeah. So that would end up would have been like more of a waste of an attack. But whereas instead uh, at this point he just uh, maybe. Uh, Maybe the Veltal goes down, but that's much less problematic. Yeah, so we do see the Acerola going into the Garbodor that has the Floatstone, and then going into his other Seismitoad, which already had the double colorless energy attached. And thanks to that extra damage from Hypnotoxic Laser, he's able to um, finish off the Veltal and take his first prize of the game. Robin actually drew for his turn before promoting an active Pokemon, which is a little bit sketchy. Oh, but uh, that's, that's a Nicky no-no. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's not how it should be played, but uh, Robin was, uh, in the end, just carried on with his turn. I think he was just frustrated by his own hand not having much going for him. So uh, we are going to see another Hypnotoxic Laser. These are so big, and again, it's a heads from Fabian. Uh, he's using them in the right spots, and they're being very impactful in both these games so far. Well, all three, I guess. Yeah, and another oh, Ace of Roller wow. as well. Of course, he just ripped it, it from his prize. prize yeah. yeah. So now, wow. Undoing so much damage, even when there's not a Verbank City in play, a Verbank City gym, I should say, he's still letting this little pokes add up a little bit more and more. Robin does fortunately wake up from his sleep, um, but still under item lock, yeah. still with not many options here. Yeah. And we were saying before how, you know, you know Heaven Toxic Laser is a lot more proactive, but now uh, his way of triggering dark, dark uh, no, Dead End GX yeah. is coming back to bite him because, of course, under item lock, you can't play the laser. If he was playing Malamar, he could like, attach an energy to it and he would still be able to do it. But as it stands, though, the Seismitoad is going to be ruining Robin's day. <laughs> That's actually one of the reasons why many players do opt for Malamar. Not only can you um, activate... Um, dead end GX when you're under item lock, but also it means that you can maybe break item lock on turns because you can send a Seismitoad EX to sleep. Maybe they can't find themselves a Guzma or another way of moving out of the active. So um, Robin's choice helped him in game two to win very quickly, but maybe punishing him in this game. Yeah, potentially. As you see there, he's uh, looking through just to see with a Hooper. He's using Scoundrel Ring mm -hmm. and grab himself his own Seismitoad, which looks like he plays, as well as uh, another Dark Post Dark Ray and a Shaman. Yeah, it's going to be strong. He does need to uh, free retreat out of this guy, I would imagine, trying to get a Dark Pulse maybe, uh, hoping really that Fabian doesn't have more Acer Roller plays because Fabian's going to do that at will, basically, every single turn that he has the option to because it's just so strong for him. Yeah, definitely. As we uh, 
I wonder, see, so if Robin plays down the Shaman here, what, what's he trying to dig for, really? Because he still can't play more items to really thin out his hand loads, so I mean, he's just trying to dig for more supporters. Yeah, so yeah. item, item. <laughs> item, item, and in any other situation, you'd be happy to see those cards, but not when Seismitoad uh, is around. So we are just going to see the free retreat from Robin, and he's going to be going for a uh, Dark Pulse here, dealing 120 damage. And uh, we know that Fabian already has the double colorless energy in hand. I'm not sure if he has a Versus Seeker or not. Um, but he is going to definitely attach to that Seismitoad, put down the Trubbish, uh, and use a Fighting Fury uh, on the Dedene, of all things. And he is going to instead go for Versus Seeker for Juniper. He doesn't really need 2 way Cerola. I think the thing he's looking for more this turn is just refreshing his hand more than anything else. Yeah, at this point, he's because uh, this is something that perhaps some players will be tempted to do, think, oh, you know, I can ace Cerola again, it leaves me with nothing, but, it, but it's fine. But in this instance, it's actually not fine, because if he did that, Fabian would be left with no draw outs and just... Uh, basically nothing and yeah. so then Robert could just uh, two hit KO the side stone and then he's in a bit of a spot of bother but instead because Fabian has a follow up attacker ready to go he's, he realises right okay I'm okay to let the side stone go down I'll play the Juniper make sure I have cards for next turn and then that way I can maybe you know do another Ace Roller laser instead of just potentially losing the game because I just really wanted to Ace Roller and get greedy yeah I like this approach from him it's much more patient it's much more progressive now he can as you've just seen with an Ultra Ball he can grab himself um, Garbatoxin Garbador which is going to shut down abilities which is really important for Robin's deck, especially the uh, Dark Cloak, and going to be able to play another Hypnotoxic Laser here, trying to catch the Dark Cloak in the active, and he once again gets heads, which is excellent for him, and uh, he's also going to follow up with an end. So the two prizes that he basically allowed Robin to take last turn by not using a Cerola now means that he has a much more powerful end on his side. Did, did you not Juniper the same turn? No, 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 this is a new turn. Okay, was Robin turn that quick? <laughs> or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He simply um, took the knockout, basically. Okay. He attached to the bench and just took a knockout. Okay. So uh, Robin's going to be shuffling up, getting just the four cards. Fabian getting five himself. Uh, but he's more than likely going to be ending on a Quaking Punch here. So, yeah. And with that, so, I mean, you really love to dig for a Vermank, but it looks like he missed that. So, yeah, he's going to have to be content with Quaking Punch for 50, but still still decent. The, this Dark Eye is working his way towards a knockout. And another Ooh. tail from Robin! You can see his facial expression. He's not too pleased about that. We do, of course, have Guzma... Uh, now available to us as a means of getting around um, uh, sleep and other status conditions. But when you just don't have it in hand, it's still just yeah. as powerful as ever. Yeah, not to mention, this is, of course, expanded, where people are playing lower amounts of physical support accounts. So mm -hmm. normally, in expanded, you'd rely on Versus Seeker to get the Guzma back. Uh, yeah. But, but it's, uh, that's just not going to work. In fact, he's only oh. playing one. Oh, no, oh, no, two. Yeah, he's playing two. My two. bad. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> he's playing two. But still, just not really ideal. Like, if this, if this was standard, it might arguably be fine, because oh, we'd be playing look at this. three physical Guzma, and then it gets this. Gets this. It's a big gets this swing. Look how large Fabian's hand size is now, and Robin really doesn't have much going on in his own hand here. This is really dominant stuff from Seismitoad X, proving its worth once again. Hands down, one of the most powerful cards of the XY block, if not just the whole expanded format. Just again, just so some, one of these cards that uh, maybe at the first first glance, if you're really not that sure about it, it can look a little bit underwhelming in terms of damage, but it just does not matter. The amount of pressure it puts on with that item lock, especially when, you, as we mentioned already, building up with the laser damage and everything else, and it's got a fighting fear about on it as well, so it's so hard to KO. How do you deal with this if you're Robin? Yeah, absolutely. It is a difficult battle for sure. We see the stadium replacement. That's why Robin opted to discard his Seismitoady that was on his bench. Fabian also was able to get a Psychic Energy attachment in there to get his uh, Garbador ready. And uh, it depends how many items from the discard. I don't think there's many from Robin just because he's had slow turns and has been under the lock. But you see, again, it's just the painful retreat. Yeah. Darkrai is so smooth when it has its abilities, but without them, uh, there are glaring weaknesses. Yeah. And, it ha and he had to retreat there as well because if mm -hmm. he didn't, he, the poison would actually KO the, yeah. the Darkrai coming back into Fabian's turn. Which, if, you, if you're a toad and you're KOing something with poison going back to your turn, it's about as good a turn as you that can ask is for. As good as it gets. Yeah. So we are going to see another Versus Seeker from Fabian. He's got that Acer Roller once again and you're just seeing how powerful this cycle can be. He's going to go into his Garbodor. I'm not sure if he has enough items in there to use it, but he can simply play down all of the cards he's just picked back up with Ace Roller, very similar to how we've seen Galissapod play in the standard format, and just get that one manual attachment to pay the two energy attack cost and simply continue his lock. Full throttle, no mercy from Fabian as he just does yeah, Quaking Punch again. And Robin can attack back with a Dark Cleave doing 130, but all Fabian needs is another Ace Roller, and Robin's going to be very, very sad, although it looks like he doesn't have it this time. He has picked up another Hypnotoxic Laser that he can play, and he's going to see the outcome once again <laughs> ahead. Oh, wow, he's been running pretty hot this game, and uh, we do see what else can he do. 
Uh, I'm not sure how large his deck size is. That looks kind of thin. He's gone through a lot of cards here, um, but I think he should be fine for the next few turns. Um, he does have the N in hand as well, which he may be debating playing. Uh, but no, he's pretty content to just go for a Quaking Punch once again here. Yeah. And and once again, if uh, Robin gets a Tails here... Oh, we can't see it. No! Oh, it's a Tails! <laughs> it's such a big flip. Oh, my goodness. So now Robin won't be able to play around this KO going back into Fabian Cern. No. He's going to be forced to pass. He needs a Guzma. It doesn't look like he has it. He's just frustrated. He's not even looking at his own hand. He's disgusted <laughs> <laughs> with this outcome, <laughs> quite frankly. He has to pass, and there is the poison knockout in between turns. Fabian's going to be able to take up uh, two prize cards, and uh, Robin sends up his Darkrai, but now it's Fabian's turn. This is just so glorious for him. But, like, Again, if you're Robin, how do you deal with this? You know, you're trying all you can, but the you know your opponent flips heads and you flip tails. You got no outs to retreat. You essentially pass to give your opponent two free prizes. It's like oh, I can't do it. I can't it's, take it. Yeah, it's got to feel pretty bad right now. He does attach manually a psychic energy to his seismitoad EX and continue to go for quaking punch here. It's an interesting attachment from him. It's saying. Robin, if you don't have a darkness energy, I can just pay retreat out of this seismitoad and make life much harder for you next turn. So he's oh. just sort of hedging that dark, that uh, Robin doesn't have much. Yeah. Turns out he has a Guzma here. Bit late. <laughs> yeah, a little bit late for him. He would have loved that a couple of turns ago, and he's got a really tough decision what to go into here. He's going to bring up his Hooper EX, it looks like, and he's going to um, bring up Fabian's other seismitoad EX, just hoping that there's not another double colorless energy in his hand so that he can maybe get out of this item lock. Yeah, so Fabian had the computer search ready to go. Yep. So <laughs> And <laughs> two double colorless energies. <laughs> yeah. He was prepared for that. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, sure, you can Guzma, but if you can't get, cut down their hand size, which obviously you can't because you'd have to do that with N, then, you know, chances are they're going to have the out. But, of course, if you're Robin, you have to play to your outs. You, can, yeah. you can't just assume that they're going to have it if there's literally another option you can do. Oh, Robin finally rips a Sycamore. Yeah, he gets a Professor Sycamore. Look how many items he's drawn. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, he can replace the stadium, but I think that's all he can do with his own hand this turn. Uh, pretty grim stuff for him. Seismitoad, you are just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not, not hiding, having no reservations about your opinion on Seismitoad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a powerful card, and I'm all behind it. I've played it myself plenty of times, but just... Robin's facial expression is how everyone feels when yeah. playing against Seismitoad X. Yeah, no one wants to be on the receiving end of a no. quaking punch. That's what it ultimately <laughs> comes down to. But when you're in the driver's seat and you're just there qu quaking away. Yeah, Fabian's <laughs> having fun. <laughs> we see him once again go for the uh, quaking punch, really starting to rack up on this Darkrai EX. He still has three prizes remaining, but this Darkrai is getting more and more in range every single turn. And when there's that Garbatoxin developed once again, uh, it's going to be hard to move this two retreat cost Darkrai. Yeah, there it is, another Quaking Punch. Although, how many cards does Fabian have left in his deck? He has one, but he's clutching onto a couple of ends, I think, so oh, okay. he'll have a lot of time. Yeah, oh, that's fine. I was worried for a second. I thought that, that he might actually let it go, but no, yeah, he's got the end ready, so yeah. Fabian will draw la his last card in the deck is also an end, yeah. so yeah, he's, he's fine. He's got a lot of turns <laughs> yeah. to carry on spamming the Quaking Punch attack, which uh, it seems simple to do. It seems like, oh, it's an obvious thing to do, but... Um, it was brave to bring Seismitoad to this tournament, and he's playing a very good list and playing the deck very well as well. So lots of combination of things, which is why he's doing so well with Seismitoad. It's not just as simple as, I found double colorless and I can item lock and win. He's progressed himself into this state where the combination of item lock and ability lock is just really punishing this Darkrai deck. Yeah, the, th the thing is about Seismitoad is that some people were fearing that so good a pod might make its like, sort of surges in strand and standard might transition over to expanded because it's a deck that slots into expanded quite easily. And of course, first impression deals with size with X very easily, even if, you, even if it has a fighting fury belt. But Fabian is like, nah, man, it's cool. I'm not going to. I'm not going to oh, play against Pod. There it is. Oh. Uh, he had the Guzma full game. Robin didn't have anything. Just the item lock doing just so much work that game. Yeah. All you could see was item cards in Robin's hand throughout that entire game, and just. Uh, Seismitoad says no. No, Seismitoad says no. A huge congratulations to Fabian, who will now be going on to 5-1 uh, and one rather than 5-0-1. We actually got the records a little bit mixed up there in the beginning, but both these players were on 4-1, so now...